welcome to the ride back. <laughs> Another episode in one day, and it's Memorial Day. So, you know, decided to go and take in uh, the Solo, a Star Wars story movie. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, I- I've already been hearing that this movie's been getting not really great reviews, uh, not really not really knocking it out of the uh, out of the park with this one. Um, uh, ultimately, what I thought of the film is that it was it was fairly average, but an above average. Also, I, I enjoyed it. Um, the, the movie uh, to me was I think everyone did a good job. I especially loved um, uh, the guy who played Han, who I honestly cannot remember his uh, his name right now. I was very impressed as always with Donald Glover. I thought he did an amazing job as Lando Calrissian. Um, Ron Howard overall as a director, I thought, I I thought he did a really good job overall, you know. Um, everything about it felt like Star Wars, you know. It, um, even though, you know, there was no, we didn't have any there was no Darth Vader cameo, although there was one cameo that I'll talk about in a, in a little bit. Um, but ultimately, uh, the, does the movie give you what you want out of a Han Solo movie? I think that's the main question, and and I would say overall, yes. There were a couple of things I was waiting to see um, that uh, did did not happen. You know, I, I kept making a joke. <laughs> that, uh, oh, look, there's going to be a cameo of Luke Skywalker, and he's just going to be walking by in Tatooine, and all of a sudden, you know, so, Anne Beru is just going to be carrying Luke, like, come on, Luke, time to drink your blue milk. <laughs> we, that doesn't happen. Although that would have been hilariously terrible for that to happen. Might have had to walk out of the theater if that had happened. But the movie, um, the movie does touch on a lot of things that are very important. Um, in Han's history, um, that being that he was uh, an um, uh, an Empire pilot, uh, he was uh, he you know that he's a smuggler, where he meets Chewbacca, um, how he got the Millennium Falcon, how he met Lando Calrissian, all of this is addressed, and it even hinted at um, him uh, going to see Jabba the Hutt for the first time, even though Jabba does not make an appearance in the movie. Uh, which I wouldn't say as a spoiler, but, you know, if we're going to talk spoilers, let's do that. Uh, so the movie starts off with him on a planet where he has this um, girl that he uh, obviously loves, um, which is not Leia, obviously. Um, I, can't, I can't remember her name exactly. I think it was her name was Kira, something like that. And the, the both of them want to get away from the planet because they're kind of like in, the, in the, almost like a slave trade kind of thing. But they uh, Han escapes the planet with um, this. Uh, they buy their way off the planet using something called hyperfuel, which is the dumbest name, by the way. Oh, they need to get hyperfuel, you know. And it, 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 there's that. So we gotta we gotta talk about stuff. But um, so he goes to, uh, he, he decides to join the Empire in order to fly back to get um, Kira off that planet. So he, he's on like a, he's on like a battle, and I don't know what planet they're on, um, but he meets up with Woody Harrelson's character and his group. His name is Beckett, Tobias Beckett. And he, um, uh, they, formulate a plan, and while, while he was on that planet, he gets thrown into um, a, a jail or a little cell where he meets Chewbacca, and then him and Chewbacca get away, and uh, then, you know, Tobias, uh, they, they formulate this plan, which goes to crap, which is classic Han, really. A lot of his plans just don't really work out, it seems, or he just, he makes shit up as he goes along, and it just, everything just kind of goes to hell. Um, but, like, he loses two of his people, who I liked. There was one guy named, I think his name was Rio, and he was, like, this four-armed little guy who was uh, the pilot of the ship, and I liked him. He was really, he was a cool character, but I knew, his, I knew his day was done. He was like, I can't wait to plan my retirement. You know, I'm like, yeah. Well, after this job, I'm going to retire on a, on a 
on an out a beach, open a cantina. You know, you're dead. You're dead. But he dies. Then uh, Tobias's girlfriend dies, or whatever. I don't know her name, but she dies. Um, and then Han and Chewie join up with him to talk to the leader of uh, I think it's, I think it was the, the Crimson Dawn. And then he meets up with his girlfriend. Um, Kira's there, and she got herself out of you know um, she got herself out of uh, the the slave planet or whatever it was Cor Cor Corilla I think Corilla Corilla I think that was what her, I think that's where they were from. But that's when they say, okay, um, if we're going to get more of, how are we going to pay our way? You, you owe me hyperfuel. So, okay, well, where are we going to get more hyperfuel? Well, we can't get regular hyperfuel, the stuff guarded too much. Let's get unrefined hyperfuel. Like, oh, well, that stuff is going to explode. Uh, how are we going to get out of there? We need a really fast ship. Oh, we know a guy who has a ship. It's Lando Calrissian. Yeah, Lando. <laughs> and Lando uh, shows up, and he's got his own droid bot, who's hilarious, by the way. Her name was L3. And I do say her because it was clearly a her. Um... But the droid is, like, very, like, she's, like, equal rights, you know? And she's, like, releasing, they, and during their plan, they're releasing all of these droids and whatnot. And, you know, I thought that was really cool. <laughs> it's like, you're liberated. I kept waiting for the cameo, like, where's R2? Didn't C-3PO and R2 say something about our, our last, um, our last, uh, owners were like spice miners or something like that I don't I, I can't really remember I'm sure someone would let me know if I was off um, but during that scuffle uh, L3 dies and Donald and Donald Glover <laughs> Lando Calrissian uh, they, they all managed to get through the Kessel Run and they said that the best you can possibly do in the Kessel Run is like I think they said 22 or 20 something parsecs and he did it in and he did it in 12 and the reason why people can only do it in 20 is because there's a maelstrom in space and he decided and there's only like one navigation course through it um but yeah there, there's only one way through it so he decides that he's going to go right through the storm and that causes you know and he manages to make it out. So they land on the planet to refine the, uh, he, they go through the planet to refine the stuff, the hyperfuel. And then this is when all the double crossing happens. Uh, Beckett double crosses Han. Han double crosses the Crimson Dawn. Kira double crosses Han. It's, it's just one after another, one after another with people double crossing everybody. And then, then the ultimate reveal, our, our cameo. Our cameo shows up that everyone is either going to go, what the hell, or awesome. Um, and that is Darth Maul. Darth Maul shows up in this movie as a hologram figure, apparently kind of an under leader of the Crimson Dawn. I I, it's either Crimson Dawn or Crimson Sun. I can't remember. Um, I think Dawn. But, yeah, Darth Maul shows up. Now, he doesn't do anything, so don't get excited. Um, but you can clearly... So where has he been this whole time? Well, I don't know if Star Wars Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels or all that is canon in any way. But apparently he does. he did survive, you know, being cut in half. Even though, you know, people who watch any of the Clone Wars and Rebels know that he was alive in there anyway. But, you know, I don't know if that counts. I guess it does. So I think that was really cool to see that. And the movie ends with um, Han and Chewbacca uh, finding Lando again. And uh, basically... Because, you know, Lando ran away. Sorry, yeah, Lando ran ran away with the Millennium Falcon. And then he, uh, you know, he puts the... He basically, he wins it in a bet. Now, earlier, uh, Lando was about to lose the Millennium Falcon in uh, a game of cards. But he cheated with something up his sleeve. 
So when Han showed up, he took he took his he like surprised him, took the took the card that we had up his sleeve, and then they went through the whole pace in betting again, and he won this time. So that's how he won the Millennium Falcon. So ultimately, I mean, basically, you have to ask yourself this simple question: Does this movie fulfill what you want out of a Han Solo movie? Uh, and I think the answer is yes. I mean. I don't know what you would really expect from a Han Solo movie. Uh, is there something more you want from it? Han Solo uh, was a, f a pilot in the in the uh, Empire. He um, who broke away and became a smuggler, and you know, and then he you know mo moves on and, and meets. Uh, Yeah, you know, he moves on and meets Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan and flies. I mean, that's that's what it is. That's the story. Uh, and that they put in basically a heist movie they, in that, I, you know, that's that's what it is. You know, and, and I enjoyed it. So, you know, if, if people don't really like the Star Wars solo movie, then, you know, that's fine. Um, I can see why you would dislike it. Um because it doesn't really play up to what Star Wars is known for, and that's the whole laser swords and, you know, space, big space battles. You know, that's, I mean, it's, it's more in line with Rogue One, which everyone really loved. So, I mean, I, I thought collectively everyone liked Rogue One. I know I did. Um, so, I'm not saying I love Solo, but I will say that I enjoyed Solo, you know. Um... But that's my overall thoughts on it. I, what, is it worth going in, in theaters? Hmm. It's a good question that I that I propose to myself. Um, I'm gonna say, yeah, check it out. Um, it's not the greatest one in the world, but I enjoyed it. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and please take a minute to like, comment, and subscribe for more super videos.